Hello, we are FTT Team 7105, Swift Intergalactic Space Squirrels, and this video is on how to use the orange palette program blocks in the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 block programming. In order to understand the programs shown in this video, it is necessary that you understand the green palette movement blocks. There are di five different blocks in the orange palette. The start block, the wait block, the loop block, the switch block, and the loop interrupt block. The first of these, the start block, is very simple. Start blocks begin a program. You can use multiple start blocks in the same file to run multiple different programs at the same time. In order to do this, go to the orange palette and bring up two start blocks. What we're going to do in this program is we're going to make the robot drive forward in one rotation, and then we're going to make the robot bark. So in the first start block, you're going to bring up a move steering block, and then for the second start block, you're going to bring up a sound block and set it to whatever sound you'd like. We use dog bark in this one. Uh, once you play the program, you can see that the robot will go forward and bark at the same time. This is because both the start blocks are playing at the exact same time once you press the download and play button. If you would like to play multiple programs on the same play block, but only after a previous program has run, then this is a great program for you. First, you'll want to grab a play block from the orange palette. Then, grab a move steering block from the green palette. Then grab another one. But this time we're going to make the robot drive backwards one rotation instead of forwards one rotation. Drag a wire from the first block to the second and then grab a sound block. You can use whatever sound you'd like in this block. We, we use dog bark. Then grab a wire from the first block and put it into the sound block. Once you download the program, you can see that what's gonna happen is the robot's gonna drive forward one rotation. Then the program is gonna split into two and the robot is gonna drive backward one rotation and bark at the same time. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the weight block. First thing you're going to want to do, go to the green palette and select the move steering block. Then go to the orange palette and select a weight block. You can set the weight for as long as you'd like. Then go to the green palette and select the medium motor. Then go to the orange palette and select a weight block. You can even set the weight block for half a second. Then go to the green palette and select a move steering block. Uh, we're going to make the robot go backwards this time. So once you download the program, you can see that the robot's going to move forward one rotation, wait one second, then it, the medium motor is going to spin one rotation, and then the robot's going to wait for half a second, and then the robot's going to move backward one rotation. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the motor rotation setting on the weight block. Go to the green palette and select a medium motor. Turn the medium motor on and then go to the orange palette and press the weight block. Turn the weight block to motor rotation compare degrees. Change the compare type to greater than or equal to and then change the threshold value to 1080. 1080 is 360 times 3. So what will happen is the medium motor will spin three times until it's reached 1080 degrees and then the rest of the program will be played. The rest of the program will be a move steering block set for one rotation. So once you download the program you can see that the medium motor is going to play the whole program but the whole program is only going to play after the medium motor spun three times. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the brick button setting on the weight block. First thing you're going to want to do, go to the orange palette and select a weight block. Change the weight block to brick buttons, compare brick buttons. Change the state to bumped. There are five options for the buttons that you can press. We're going to keep the button on center. Go to the green palette and select the move steering block. So once you download the program, 
you can see that the robot will wait until you press the middle button. Then the robot will move forward one rotation. This example will demonstrate the default loop setting, the default being unlimited. So first, you'll want to grab a loop block from the orange palette. You can leave the loop block as it is once you've brought it up. Go to the green palette and select the move steering block. Turn it on and there it is. This program will run over and over and over until you press the stop button on your robot. That's because you set the loop to unlimited. Once you run the program, you can see that that's exactly what will happen. The robot will run as long as you want it until you press the off button. In this next example, we will show you how to use the time indicator setting. So the first thing you want to do, go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Change the loop block setting to time indicator. Go to the green palette and select the move steering block. Turn the block to on and there's your program. What will happen is the loop will play for five seconds. Once you download your program, you can see that the robot will drive forward for five seconds. In this next program, we will show you how to use the motor rotation setting on the loop block. So first thing you're going to want to do, go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Change the loop block to motor rotation degrees. Change the threshold value to 1080. Then change the compare type to greater than or equal to. So what will happen is after you put the medium motor block inside this loop and turn it to on, the motor will spin three times until it's reached 1080 degrees. Once you download the program, you can see this is exactly what happens. All it does is spin three times and then exits the loop. In this next example, we will be showing you how to make your robot do several things while using the motor rotation setting on the loop block. So first thing you're going to want to do, grab a loop block from the orange palette. Change the loop block to motor rotation degrees. Change the compare type to greater than or equal to, and then change the threshold value to 720. Go to the green palette and select a medium motor block and leave it as is. Next, grab a move steering block and you can leave that one as, as is as well. Then go to the orange palette and grab a loop block. Then go to the green palette and select a medium motor block. Change the loop to motor rotation degrees. Change the compare type to greater than or equal to. And then change the threshold value to 360. Change the motor, medium motor to on. So what's gonna happen in this program once you download the program, is the medium motor will spin one rotation twice. Then the robot's gonna move forward one rotation, and then the medium motor will spin one more time. The next program will show you how to use the count setting on the loop block. So first, you'll want to go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Then go to the green palette and select the move steering block. Change the loop block to count. You can set the count for as many as you'd like. We set it for five because it's easier to see what's going on the more counts you have. So what's going to happen is that your move steering block is set for one rotation. So what's going on is it's going to play one rotation five times. Once you download the program, you can see that it's going to play one rotation, stop, play again, stop, play again, stop, until it reaches five counts. This next program will show you how to exit a loop which is set to logic. So first thing you want to do, grab a loop block from the orange palette. Set the loop to logic, then go to the green palette and select a move steering block. Set it to on. Then grab a touch sensor block from the yellow palette. Set the uh, sensor to compare state. Compare state will compare the desired state to the current state of the sensor and tell whether or not it is in that state or not. So if we take a wire from the touch sensor and put it in the logic loop, the robot will keep driving forward until the desired state of the sensor is reached. 
Then, once it is reached, the logic loop will sense that the state is true, and therefore allowing the program to exit the loop and go on with its life. Once you download the program, you can see that the robot will go forward until the sensor is pressed. Then it will exit the loop and stop the program. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the brick button setting on the loop block. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Change the loop block to brick buttons. Then there are five options for a button you can press. We're gonna keep it on the center button. Select the state to be bumped. So what's gonna happen once you put the move steering block inside the loop and turn it to on is the robot's gonna go forward until you press the middle button. Once you download the program, you can see that the robot's gonna go forward as long as you want until you press the middle button. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the timer setting on the switch block. First thing you're gonna wanna do, go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Then grab a switch block. Put the switch block inside the loop block. Change the switch block to timer compare time indicator. Change the compare type to greater than or equal to. Then change the threshold value to three. Go to the green palette and select the display block. Put it in the true case. Then grab another display block and put it in the false case. Then change both images to text pixel then choose the place you want the text to appear on the screen. If you kept it at zero, zero, it would be in the top left corner of the screen. The text size, we're just gonna keep it at normal because it's easier to see. Change the top to over three seconds and then change, change the bottom text to under three seconds. So once you download the program, you can see that what's gonna happen is on the screen, the EV3 is gonna show under three seconds until three seconds is passed. Then the screen will show over three seconds. In this next example, we will show you how to use the motor rotation setting on the switch block. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, go to the green palette and select a medium motor block. Turn the block to on, then go to the orange palette and select a weight block. Turn this block to timer, compare, time indicator. Change the threshold value to three, and then change the compare type to greater than or equal to. Grab a switch block, and then change the switch block to motor rotation, compare, degrees. Change the compare type to greater than or equal to, and then change the threshold value to 720. What will happen now is the medium motor will spin for three seconds. If at the end of the three seconds, the medium motor has spun 720 degrees, the true case will play. If at the end of three seconds, the medium motor hasn't spun 720 degrees, then the false case will play. So in the true case, we'll put a move steering block and make the robot go forward. In the false case, we'll put a move steering block and we'll make the robot go backward. So how you can use this program, say you're trying to get a mission done on a board. In order to get this mission done, you need to use your medium motor with an attachment. But sometimes your program doesn't work because your attachment gets stuck. Well, with this program, you can still run your usual program. But if your attachment gets stuck after three seconds, whatever program you put in the false case will play. So you could have the robot back up and return to base so that you don't have to get a penalty. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the numeric setting on the switch block. So first thing you're going to want to do, go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Then grab a switch block. Grab a touch sensor block from the yellow palette. Then change the switch block to numeric all the way at the bottom. Take a wire from the touch sensor block and put it into the numeric switch block. Change the bottom case to the default case and then grab a move steering block from the green palette. Put it in the top and turn it to on. Then grab another one and turn it to on, but this time we'll make the robot go backwards. So once you download the program, what will happen is when the sensor is pressed, the sensor will read one. So whatever program you put in the top case will play. 
If the sensor is not pressed, the sensor will read zero and it will play whatever program is in the bottom case. In this next program, we will be showing you how to use the logic setting in the switch block. So first thing you wanna do, grab a play block from the orange palette, then grab a uh, loop block. The loop block is very helpful when using a switch block. This is because it allows the switch to keep reading the state of the robot. So if something happens to the robot mid-program, the switch can change its setting. If you didn't include the, the loop, whatever program the switch is running will stay the same no matter what the robot may sense. So next thing you want to do, grab a touch sensor from the yellow palette, change it to compare state, then grab a switch block, change the switch block to logic. Then bring a wire from the touch sensor block and put it into the switch block. You'll want to keep the touch sensor block on pressed. Grab a move steering block from the green palette, put it in the true case. Then grab a move tank block from the green palette and put it in the false case. We're just going to make the robot turn. So what's going to happen once you download the program is if the touch sensor is pressed, the true case is going to flip so the robot will go forward one rotation. However, if the touch sensor is not pressed, then the robot is gonna turn. You'll have multiple chances to press and not press the button because you put a loop block around this whole program. In this next example, we will show you how to use a switch block. First thing you're gonna wanna do is grab a loop block from the orange palette then grab a switch block from the same place. Change the switch block to brick buttons, measure brick buttons. Then you're gonna wanna add a case to this switch block. You're going to want to change the trigger to nothing. So when you press nothing on the robot, it's gonna play this case. Change it to the default case, and then go to the top case and change the button to left, and then the middle case and change it to right. What this will do is if you press the left button, the program in that case will play. If you press the right button, the program in that case will play. If you don't press any buttons, the default case will play, which is the last case on the line right now. So next thing you wanna do is grab a move steering block, then grab a, tr a move tank block from the same place and we're gonna make the robot turn. So what will happen if you press the right button is it's gonna go forward and then turn. We're gonna place the same blocks we put in the top case in the bottom case, except we're gonna change two things. We're gonna make the robot turn the other way and then we're gonna make it go backwards. So if you press the right button, it's going to go backwards and then it's going to turn so once you download the program, you can see that when you press the left button, it goes forward and then turns. When you press the right button, the robot goes backward and then turns. But if you don't press any buttons, the default case will play. But there's nothing in the default case, so it's not going to do anything. It's just going to wait for your next command. In this final program, we will be showing you how to use the loop interrupt block. So first thing you're going to want to do go to the orange palette and select a loop block. Then go to the green palette and select a move steering block. So what's gonna happen is that the loop is gonna play this program over and over and over again. But when you grab the loop interrupt block from the orange palette, what's gonna happen is the robot's gonna go forward one rotation and then the loop is going to be exited. So once you download the program, you can see this is exactly what's gonna happen. The robot's gonna go forward one rotation and then stop. If we didn't include the loop interrupt block, the loop would just play one rotation over and over and over again. So those are some of the ways you can program your robot using the orange palette programming blocks. If you would like to learn more about programming your EV3 robot, be sure to check out our other videos.